Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. Welcome to today's edition of Helping Seniors Television from the Helping Seniors Network. Whether you are caring for a senior, are a senior, or just plan to be one, we hope you'll enjoy today's program. Learn about Florida nonprofit organization Golden Providers, whose members are involved in local businesses that work with seniors. Find out about the Golden Providers Sunday Learning Series free open to the public learning seminars as well as business to business networking meetings with our guest Golden Providers President Tom Toronto. I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors Television. What a pleasure it is to welcome you to today's program. I'm here for Joe Steckler who is our president and founder and uh, today I have a very special guest. His name is Tom Toronto. He is the president of the Golden Providers Organization. And you guys are, a, we're, well, I'm a member of Golden Providers too, but we're, it's, a, it's a nonprofit organization dedicated to uh, providing excellence to seniors in our community, very much like helping seniors, although a different approach because it's really a lot of business to business and some of that. So I want to welcome you to the show Thank today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit, if somebody has never heard the term Golden Providers, what is a Golden Provider? And So yeah, it is a group of businesses uh -huh. that cater to seniors or work with seniors. Uh, some of the businesses don't only work with seniors, they work with the general population, but they um, have... We basically vetted each other to see that we're going to take people that we've done business with in the mm -hmm. past. We know them. We trust them. Essentially, someone that you would feel comfortable mm -hmm. having go and work on your, your grandmother's house or right. your mother's house. That you know that they're going to treat them fairly when it comes to price, competence, that they're licensed and insured. But also that they have that extra knowledge that they would need to have to deal with a senior. That they have that patience and um, so that everything would work out well. And so the idea from the beginning was to, we have people all the time asking, well, you know, who can I trust to send to mm -hmm. these seniors who are in a vulnerable position? And they could end up going to Craigslist or mm -hmm. just uh, asking a neighbor or some, you know, some random person. And we just don't know who's entering that house. Mm -hmm. Um, and we hear stories all the time about jobs that get paid up front and never finished, people that are not licensed and insured. We hear about the things going missing, theft, mm -hmm. and we just don't want that. You know, we right. want to prevent that. So part of what Golden Providers is, is the roster of our members whom we know and we trust. Mm -hmm. It also provides a networking event once a month, mm -hmm. and we meet on the last Tuesday of every month, mm -hmm. 7.30 to 9 a.m., mm -hmm. We currently meet at the Hibiscus Court, mm -hmm. and, um, and you, we have a website as well, right. goldenproviders.org. You can keep right. up with any changes there. And what we do there is we meet the other members and mm -hmm. guests face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. So we get to develop that relationship, that trust, that I didn't really know this person, I didn't know their business, but after meeting them right. at the group, networking with them, I feel comfortable now referring them business. So the members are promoting their business, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we, uh, we get education while mm -hmm. we're there. So every meeting, we are educated in different um, elements of what, what it affects seniors. Very educational, especially for someone like myself. I'm a real estate agent, but I hadn't specialized in anything to do with seniors. And it's just a whole new world for me to see all the different issues, all the different um, elements of how to take care of seniors, how to serve them. Uh, and give them the best advice. You know, it's it's such an interesting conversation to be having because I always love to quote the statistics that we have here in Brevard County. We're a county of roughly 550,000 uh, people. And literally, uh, I think the answer is we're somewhere around the 10th oldest county um, in, ter in terms of the breakdown of, of age population and such. And the interesting thing is if you go by 65 plus, we have one in four persons living in Brevard County is a senior. Right. And uh, there's more seniors in our county than there actually are children under the age of eight, I would say school children, children under the age of 18. 
uh, in our county. And if you wanted to broaden it and use the AARP definition, which they say, you know, at 50 plus, we consider you a senior, that's one of two people in our county. Yep. So we always have this conversation that if you live in Brevard County, you either are a senior, um, you care for a senior, or Lord willing, you're going to be a senior. Yep. And so you might as well start to take it, take advantage of learning some things that will help you in that whole aging process. And with Golden Providers, it adds another level because um, if you're doing business in this county, whether you're a senior business or not, you're going to be doing business with yeah. seniors by definition just because of who the ages of the folks living in our county are. And one of the things that uh, occurred to me about Golden Providers as, as a kind of a definitional way to explain it is, is it's, it's like one part of the networking and things that you might get from a Chamber of Commerce experience. Yeah. Businesses coming together, uh, Mr. So-and-so is aware that Ms. So-and-so over here has a need and maybe there's a matchup with one of the other members. So there's a lot of yep. lead, leads that go back and forth. Mm -hmm. There's another part that is, it seems to me, that it is um, uh, where you're actually having this opportunity to educate people so that if you are in a business that isn't, because we're, we're, we're blessed with members who are experts in the, in yep. the business, but then there are people who are more like tangentially working with seniors who need to understand that there are certain ways to approach things. You need to be aware of the things that uh, may be going on for seniors yep. and, and ways to accommodate that. So there's a lot of different um, aspects to this. And that education part really becomes a, a, another, you know, another part of it. And the third part is that there's almost a sort of a better business bureau kind of mentality because there is an accountability amongst the members. Yeah. And how often do we hear, we've done programs at Helping Seniors, where we've had Ashley Moody, who's the assistant state attorney, uh, who really has been a fearless fighter for uh, making sure that seniors uh, uh, are not taken advantage of in scams and frauds and things like that. In fact, we were having a conversation this morning with one person who was dealing with a situation where uh, an unscrupulous, uh, I guess it was a contractor, had done something to this senior's home many years ago, and um, the, the contractor got drummed out of the state because of a lot of issues, but then there was a finance company who had financed this work, and it was all a big mess because of, because of this particular situation. And one of the things that I think is important about Golden Providers is it seems to really want to try to address and bring in those organizations that are serious about doing business yeah. with seniors on an ethical and a, a and a community standards kind of basis. Yes, absolutely. So if if anyone ever had a legitimate complaint, an mm -hmm. ethics complaint about one of our members, mm -hmm. that would be dealt with. Most likely they would be removed from the group. And so it's it is a kind of a regulating that our roster should be people that we feel comfortable um, handing out that roster to, mm -hmm. to anybody to recommend. So um, as a business owner, most of the people that are in the group mm -hmm. are actually either sales reps or own mm -hmm. their own business. Uh, one of the nice things about it is that we do get business out of it. We do go, we mm -hmm. introduce ourselves, we uh, maybe are the spotlight speaker for the meeting, mm -hmm. and we'll get business out of it. So that's the, the business side of it. But just as an organization, we get educated ourselves in senior issues mm -hmm. at the meetings and in other events. But a new thing that we're started doing is basically educating the community as, right. as a nonprofit organization. And uh, most recently, we did a seminar about downsizing. Yeah, I was going to I was going to talk to you about that because that really represents an opportunity where you have experts coming together to deliver information to seniors and the people that care about the seniors about things that they would never, perhaps, ordinarily be thinking about. Yeah, so the events are, the idea is that we get as many people mm -hmm. as we can fit in the room at the event for the mm -hmm. live event. But even more importantly, I think, is that we are videotaping mm -hmm. the events so that they can be viewed at any time, maybe hundreds or thousands of times after the recorded event, typically a one hour mm -hmm. seminar. Um, and just looking at um, that particular one. So one of the questions is just, it's an overwhelming thing to realize I've got all this stuff I've been living in my house for 30 years. Yes. The kids have moved out. Um, I know it's probably not safe any longer to, to live on my own. 
I just don't know who the first phone call would be. What do I do? Um, where's all this stuff going to go? Where am I going to go? How, is it gonna, how am I going to get there? How much is it going to cost me to do all this? And so the default response is to do nothing. To do nothing, To stay right. where you're at. And, you know, through our seminar, we broke down into multiple different pieces. You know, who is that first phone call? Right. Um, and, you know, it could be, first of all, figuring out where you're going to go mm -hmm. before figuring out what to do with right. the big house. We introduced uh, some assisted livings, some uh, experts that help people to find mm -hmm. the, the appropriate place. Um, we also have a real estate agent, which was myself, to talk about, well, you know, we could sell your property. Maybe you could buy a smaller mm -hmm. residence, maybe a 55 plus community that's mm -hmm. e easier to maintain, or it could be a, um, an assisted living facility. And, you know, who would I talk to? We had a, a Hibiscus Court was one of our speakers right. and our sponsor. Then we talked about a, a professional organizer, about getting the stuff in the house organized. Mm -hmm. We had uh, an estate sale company talk about right. it's easier than you think to just get rid of the stuff that's not the important sentimental stuff. Mm -hmm. And so taking this overwhelming um, situation that people feel down to maybe a couple phone calls, yeah. two or three phone calls, and literally the whole process could actually be very, very easy. Yeah. And that's just something that the, that event went well. Our upcoming events that we're looking at, we're looking at... Uh, Fraud prevention, mm -hmm. um, I, we hear stories all the time about seniors getting a phone call from the IRS yeah. or somebody who's going to help them uh, fix a, a virus mm -hmm. on their iPad, and they literally pay money yes. or give out personal information that could lead to identity theft. Right. Uh, I was actually at someone's house one time when a call came in asking about her, uh, who her primary care physician is and other information, claiming they were from her insurance company. She handed the phone to me, and when I talked to the person, it was definitely not her insurance right. company. They were obviously trying to do something to file a, a, a false claim with, right. with her insurance or something. And it was um, just unbelievable that those things happen. Yeah. So one of our goals is with our upcoming seminar to cover a lot of those things so that the seniors start to be aware of what kind of scams are out there yeah. and how they can recognize that's not real hang up, and what to do about it. You know, when you were talking about, a few minutes ago, you were talking about, uh, I think the seminar was called Downsizing 101. And by the way, we'll make sure that the links are available so that you can see the video from that session. It was really uh, an impactful session. You put together a tremendous uh, seminar. You had some amazing speakers. And part of the thinking behind it was that People don't, uh, I've heard it said before, people don't get up on a random Saturday and start thinking about things like that. We usually only start thinking about things like that when we start to feel pressured because we know we have to do something about it. And as we all know, we typically don't make the best decisions when we're under yep. you know, pressure, but a lot of times that's when these things get made. And particularly, as we talked about in the downsizing uh, seminar with the different speakers, is you're making a decision that really impacts the rest of your life and yep. hopefully many years of the rest of your life. So you don't want to make that decision in crisis mode. You, yep, want to, you want to try to get ahead of that aging curve and find some way to deal with it. So here's a low impact way uh, to, to participate in a free, it was free, right? Yep. It was free to Absolutely. the public. Mm -hmm. And the people who came were able to sit in a non it was not a sales event. Nobody was Correct. pitching services. It was just information, and people could ask questions in that kind of a safe environment to 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 really start at least beginning the conversation yeah. they need to have. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that uh, that was uh, that was the idea to get, and, and not only that, to give people, you know. Some of the people that were the speakers might be that first phone call. Mm -hmm. They might have felt so comfortable with with someone that was mm -hmm. a speaker that might be, hey, when I'm realizing it's time to right. maybe downsize, I'll call and have a conversation with one of the speakers. But yeah, the goal is to give information about what the steps look like so that this giant overwhelming thought of moving and selling all my, getting rid of a lot of my stuff that mm -hmm. um, feels sentimental now, but mm -hmm. as you work through it, you realize, there's certain things that should be kept, and the others is others is just stuff or or 
also known as junk. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to comment, you did a brilliant job of pulling together speakers that covered so many. Uh, you brought in uh, a lady who is a professional organizer, yes. and it was very interesting because there was there were so many like takeaway bullet points or whatever you want to call them from each one of these speakers about how do you address this overwhelming situation where you've collected a lifetime of memories. And, and uh, you know, here comes a professional organizer to help you uh, sort through this and make a path out of something that seems completely impossible. And she brought a lot of, I remember she brought a lot of before and after yeah. pictures, and mm -hmm. it was fascinating. And then you had um, uh, uh, the lady from uh, Hibiscus Court, uh, Heidi Kuchenbacker, who came and she said, uh, she, she, she said how to have that talk. In right. fact, it was such a good... Uh, story that we invited her back to tell that right. story on a on a helping seniors TV because that's the thing you know something needs to change when is the right time to begin saying how are we going to yeah. address this how going to move forward I wanted to ask you how did you think when you were putting it together how did you think about these are the people we need to bring together so that we really give somebody a good a good starting position <laughs> for this yeah so I had been dealing with cl my own clients who had been in that situation for I'll give you an example of the one uh, couple. Um, he, he basically said he could afford to move into an assisted living. Mm -hmm. It was definitely time. The house was way too much for him to maintain. Mm -hmm. He was still trying to do a lot of the work right. himself. And there was a lot of stuff in the house. It was, and he said, once you've sold the house, I'll move. He wanted to stay there. Wow. The house wasn't presentable. I, wow. The, the, it, it just was not presentable in, in any way. You couldn't even take decent photos of it because there was so much junk. Right. It was dark, the, all the curtains were down. It was just very difficult to market and sell. And he, he couldn't leave or didn't leave if, when we were trying to show the, the house. Wow. So it kind of made it a catch-22. And uh, all, the big question is like, the day if we were to get it under contract, where's all this stuff going? And it's overwhelming. He wanted to be hands-on with what's going to happen to his right. stuff. It took him falling down and, stay, and being on the floor for two days for him to actually decide, okay, it's time. Yeah. And then we were able to price it right and start to really move. It, we, we had to call all these people. He found an assisted living that he's living in today, and we were able to go through this entire process. Uh, estate sale companies, cleaning companies, mm -hmm. uh, someone to move this stuff. But it was a, an event that really made this clear to me that people uh, don't have this path clear in mind. They don't realize that, right. you know, it, Take the stuff that's sentimental, find where you're going to go. I can take care of this, the rest of this stuff. I right. can make two phone calls and get rid of the stuff that's now, you don't need it anymore. Right. And it's not luxury items. And so I think, you know, you get a lot of people who, I would probably say the majority of people have a lot of stuff. Yeah. I, another, I mean, another thing that stood out for me, I remember you were talking about, uh, when you gave your part of the presentation, you were talking about this issue of even having what you call double closings because the process is really like it's like orchestrating a ballet or something. Everything yeah. has to be at the right place at the right time to make all these pieces move. Yeah, so if you're selling the big house and closing on a smaller house and you need the funds from this house to buy the second house and the stuff has to be out <laughs> and moved in, Wow. It can happen, it happens all the time, but there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. You've right. got to make sure that the stuff is removed, the house is cleaned, you close, and you do an early morning closing on this one, an afternoon closing on this one, and then they can unload. So um, there are options, and again, if you're gonna choose an agent, you wanna choose somebody who's done that many, right. many times and knows exactly what, you know, don't do it on the Friday, you know. It's right, right. <laughs> you know, and, and it's funny because uh, Joe Steckler, who's our, I know you know, our, our president and founder, yeah. he's always talking about the importance of people making an aging plan because he says, you know, here you are, you're at this stage, but as you as you continue to age, think ahead about the things that you're going to need and the and and get yourself a mindset going so that you can have a good long life with with good options and that you you're not running yourself into the corner. And I think that's one of the things that through these seminars that Golden Providers is now doing with this you know the safety, mm -hmm. the fraud prevention, and there's a lot of things on tap that are coming up in yeah. the near future as far as topics and in this county and with seniors. I don't think you would ever exhaust the possibilities, but what what is so important uh, about Golden Providers as an organization is that interactivity because um, the organization started, I believe it was 2000, 
I think it was like 2009 or something, maybe mm -hmm. 2010. And it had always had that uh, ability for people to network with each other. And I'm fascinated. I want to have you talk for a few minutes just about uh, what happens in a in a in a Golden Providers meeting and who might want to consider attending. But but in that, I, wa I want to say it's fascinating to hear just as people are sharing coffee and 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 pastries and things while uh, during the networking part of the session. It's interesting how people are referring business to each other that really is in the benefit and the interest of the customer. Yeah. Like, you know, this person, like I've, we, we have a, a very solid uh, expert pest control member, yeah. and he talks about how it's interesting to see how all these different businesses work together, but really with the senior's interest as the first and foremost goal. Not Even yeah. above, you know, yeah. I, as we've heard Alan say many times, you know, I want to be sure that I'm telling them the right thing not just either A, what they want to hear, right. or B, you know, sell them something they don't need. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so um, part of the original idea was to have a lot more of the practical mm -hmm. services, the electrician, the plumber, mm -hmm. the handyman or contractor, the roofer, uh, so that we knew that these were the ones in mm -hmm. town that we can comfortably recommend. We have a lot of, and we do have those services in mm -hmm. the group, we have a lot of people who work with, with seniors mm -hmm. as, as their job. But the interactions are interesting. I'll, I'll give you, like, so for example, we have an estate planning attorney. Mm -hmm. And um, in discussions with her, uh, and I think it's probably a, mm -hmm. a, a clear that about 70% of people don't have a will, a right. trust, a, a durable power of attorney, right. um, an estate plan. And that means that if something happens to them mm -hmm. and they become incapacitated, it can create problems for all sorts of other people, including right. the real estate agent can't list the house because one of the spouses is incapacitated right. and there is no properly executed power of attorney. So having those resources, it's a way for, I know who to call right. for somebody. It's like, you don't have your paperwork together, get this done. It's gonna be cheaper to do it now. Right. Same thing in the other direction. Um, the guardians, there's a couple of guardians, they run into cases where there's a house that needs to be sold. They wanna hand it off to uh, an experienced real mm -hmm. estate agent rather than just you know just going and finding whatever person that might not have the experience needed for right. a complex transaction yeah you know and that's and that's one of the things I think is uh, we have uh, in the side the golden providers group there's a number of uh, professional guardians who participate as well and one of the things that's interesting is and I think this may have been partially how the group came together to begin with was those people walk onto the scene, they're court appointed uh, more yeah. often than not. Uh, they're court appointed to take control of a situation. Maybe there's been abuse. Maybe there's been fraud. The person is not able to look after their own best interests. So now they're having to try to make the best of a very complicated situation. So they need this Rolodex of people yeah. that they can call and know without thinking about it. That if I call this person, it's going to be okay. This is yeah. the one to call in. <clears throat> so inside the meeting itself, Tell us a little bit about what somebody would expect if they if they took the took the uh, Tuesday morning and came yeah. to that meeting. So yeah, so about seven thirty, it's uh, kind of an open mm -hmm. networking. So some people are coming a little bit after that, and so there's uh, coffee, pastries, and the networking is you've got the members, we've got guests at almost mm -hmm. every meeting. Uh, we'll basically just start. Chatting with each other, yeah. networking, and you know, at a networking event, my uh, the golden rule is always talk with someone that you don't know very well, right, right. not the person that you you know very well and know, and just expanding that, um, like you say, rolodex. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've learned to use years, that term anymore, rolodex. No, I don't know <laughs> contacts, and is people will sometimes ask me for a certain provider that I actually I either don't know one mm -hmm. that I I can trust or there's ones that I know that I've had bad experiences with. Right. And I simply can't, I'm not going to give a number or a name right. if I don't know for a certainty that that is a very good person because right. sometimes people even press you, like, come on, just give me one. You know, If I'm gonna go and just look someone up randomly, they could do the same thing. Right. Because if anything ever goes wrong when you've referred somebody, they're gonna look back at you. Yeah, your, your, rep your reputation's yeah. on the line. And so uh, I need to, and everyone needs to be constantly expanding that database of people that that's a very good, right. whatever the industry, I've got the, I've, I've heard testimonials, I've, I've seen their presentation. Right. 
I feel start to feel more and more comfortable referring them to somebody as, as opposed to just someone from Google. Yeah. So you have so so there's the networking time, and then there's a presentation or something yes. that follows. So after that, everybody who's in the room gets an opportunity, roughly sixty seconds, mm -hmm. to present themselves, like who they are, what they do, what would be a good referral for them. After that, there's a spotlight speaker mm -hmm. that is uh, one of the members of the group, or it could be an external speaker mm -hmm. who's going to cover um, something of interest about what they do in, in relation to seniors. Mm -hmm. And so it's all sorts of interesting. Um, you, you always walk away having learned something new. And then as a wrap up, we cover what has happened in terms of networking, mm -hmm. referrals, testimonials mm -hmm. since the last meeting. Mm -hmm. And then we cover what upcoming events are going to be happening either with Golden Providers or in the community, the senior community. That's good. So if somebody's going to get more information about Golden Providers, they can visit goldenproviders.org, goldenproviders.org. That's the website. There's yep. also a Facebook page, right? Yes, yep. So you can find Facebook. And it will have links to all the things that you want to know about Golden Providers, which would be when the meetings are, which yeah. is the fourth, or the, sorry, the last Tuesday of every month, of every month 7.30 to 9 a.m. And at? At Hibiscus Court. Okay, which is in Melbourne. So, yes. and it's free to, free yes. to attend, Everyone's to, to welcome visit. Everyone's to visit us, yes. Yeah, and then membership is not an expensive proposition, and all that information is on the website. Correct. But, but it's designed for businesses that care for seniors. We got about 20 seconds left. If you want to look at a camera and just make an appeal to somebody, say, come check Golden Providers. Yeah, so uh, we'd love to have you at our next meeting. Uh, come on out, visit us at Golden Providers, and we'll get to meet you face to face. Well, that's great, Tom. Thanks for uh, making the time thank to you. stop by helping seniors and tell us all about Golden Providers. And thank you, viewer, for taking the time to watch Helping Seniors TV. Thanks again. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.